Now, let's turn to a different form of atrial septal defect, the so-called atrium primum defect, which is a little bit of a different defect, also in the way it develops embryologically. And what the typical feature on the echocardiogram is that you do not have any residual intraatrial septum here right at the level of the AV valves, but that the defect is right close to where these valves are. So in reality, what we have here is a so-called endocardial cushion defect. So it's actually an AV canal defect. We also call it partial AV canal defect because only an atrial septal defect is present. In a so-called complete AV canal, there would also be a defect here in the interventricular septum. So you'd have a VSD and an AST. This is only an ASD, that's why it's a partial AV canal defect, or we also call it primum atrial septal defect. So this is the way an ASD1 looks, and it's usually very easy to differentiate it from an ASD2. Here, let's take a look at this patient here. Here you see, again, a large defect here in the interatrial septum, right close to the AV valves, again, a primum defect. But if you look closely, you will see that this part of the interventricular septum is also not completely normal. As a matter of fact, what you have here is you have an aneurysmatic sealed ventricular septal defect. So if you want to define this correctly, it would be a complete AV canal defect with a sealed VSD here. But the important finding here is this shunt between the right and the left atrium, which can again best be appreciated in an angulated view.